How you doing everybody? Today we're taking a quick look at Your Monster. This was written and directed by Caroline Lindy and stars Melissa Barrera, Tommy Dewey, and Edmund Donovan. Barrera plays Laura, a young theater actress who has been through some shit. She was diagnosed with cancer and had to have surgery to remove said cancer, and her playwright boyfriend Jacob, played by Donovan, walked out on her while she was in the hospital recovering from surgery. And if that's not enough, he is now making the play that he originally wrote for her without her. After she gets out of the hospital, she moves back into her mom's old apartment because she has nowhere else to go, really. And things get really weird when the monster that was living under her bed when she was a child suddenly comes out of the closet. Oh, not like that. I mean, literally. Your Monster began life as a short film a few years ago, and Lindy has now adapted it into a feature. And this is an absolutely bonkers concept. Possibly the strangest retelling of Beauty and the Beast I've ever seen. And I've seen Belle. But as strange as it is, it somehow works. When the story begins, Laura is already at the lowest point in her life, and then suddenly she has to deal with this terrifying monster that's living in her closet. And at first, the monster, who is played by Dewey, would much rather have the house to himself and is just a raging asshole. But over time, once they both let their guard down, it turns out he actually can be pleasant and even weirdly charming. And it helps that Dewey's performance as monster he doesn't really have a name, he's just called Monster, is very good. I have not seen much of his work before, but he really pulls off both the scary and charming sides of the character. And he has to do it all under some very heavy makeup and prosthetics, which I assume is where most of this movie's budget went. Barrera is also very good. I previously saw her in In the Heights, which I enjoyed. So I know she can act and sing, and she gets to do both in this movie. The movie itself is not a musical, but the Broadway show within the movie that's being put on by her douchebag ex-boyfriend is a musical. The relationship between her and Monster, bizarre as it is, totally works. They have very good chemistry. And she has some very funny moments as well. Right after getting out of the hospital and settling into her mom's old apartment, she's basically ugly crying nonstop for several days to the point where the Amazon delivery guy is basically bringing her daily tissue deliveries. And she really shouldn't be crying over Jacob because that guy sucks and Donovan is just so easy to hate as this character. At the table read for his play, he gives this big impassioned speech about how he really loves women and wanted to tell a story about women's empowerment. Keep in mind, this is right after he left his cancer-stricken girlfriend in the hospital. And he wrote the play for her and just cast her aside when it became too inconvenient. He's the type that acts like a tortured artist and tries to let everyone know he's really a nice guy, trademark. But in truth, he's just a douchebag. And the movie, I thought, did a pretty good job of leaving the monster open to interpretation. Does he actually exist, or is this all just playing out in Laura's head and it's just the manifestation of the emotional roller coaster she's been going through? And when we see the monster doing something, is it actually the monster, or is it just her? My personal theory is the monster is not real, but honestly, it could go either way. It's a clever idea, it's bonkers in all the best ways, it's well acted, it's funny, and I enjoyed it very much. For about 95% of the runtime. But then the ending happened, and that was... That was. Yeah, it sure was. Without spoiling anything, it goes into a very dark place that I really was not expecting and tonally didn't fit the rest of the movie. Like, it never felt like this is the point we were leaning up to. It just kind of happened. And appropriately, the last thing we see in the movie is the audience for the douchebag's play just kind of sitting there in stunned silence, which is exactly what the audience in my theater did. Oddly enough, it's not the first time that's happened to me this year, and in fact, it's not even the second time when a movie has been pretty good for most of the runtime, but then the ending just derails it. And that sucks because it's a mostly excellent film. Like I said, it's a really clever idea. The cast did a great job. It's just a shame they didn't stick the landing. And that makes it hard to decide how to call this one. Uh, I definitely don't think it's worth paying full price. Maybe a matinee, but I think for most people, you should just wait for VOD. And that's all I have to say about Your Monster. Till next time, take care.